Time for a new Neville Nugget. Something to chew on. Well, how Neville Goddard has affected me and influenced me. Let's just say that manifesting my SP or winning the lotto or any of these things which are wonderful in and of themselves, but for me personally, it's really been more of an awakening. More of a... Listen, I first was subjected to Neville Goddard almost 20 years ago, really. <laughs> and it wasn't until very, very recently that this other stuff, which is really the heart and soul of the material, the God stuff, really didn't mean what it means to me now. Really, for me, this whole thing has been healing and, you know, coming into the wakefulness of, of everything, coming to, to the full realization, like, applying a lot of the newfound wisdom to the old narratives, thus undoing them, erasing them, just seeing the past that I've remembered as, for lack of better words, not having really ever been other than, you know, this shit's profound. And I kind of have trouble believing that so many people here, let's say, on the YouTube airwaves get it. But, uh, but we all get it, I guess, in our own way. I got Neville. <clears throat> while literally rejecting the bulk of it, you know, the God stuff. That's why I didn't really get into his uh, oral lectures too much. But recently, I mean, in, in the last year or so, everything and anything I hear in Neville is, is amazing. Well, here's the thing. So the whole manifesting thing, the whole thing of, uh, you know, practicing techniques to you know, manifest your desires. You know, that hasn't really been my thing. My thing has been healing. My thing has been restoration. My thing has been the rebirth. The resurrection, if you will. The awakening and the coming into power, right? Because from there, all things come forth, you know what I mean? God is infinite. You know, coming to terms with that, everything else just is. So instead of like pursuing all these little things that we want, just go for what well, my old algebra teacher, Mr. Pedro, said the least common denominator. Just refine it down to the one cause substance your consciousness I am that I am you know what I mean now I'm not really sure what my own deep-seated subconscious beliefs have been if there's been any hidden whatever so I'm not really sure what my thing had been but for whatever reason I was quietly I have been quietly building and beefing up like a Hulk butterfly in the cocoon, right? Ready to burst forth, but not testing, not practicing, not dipping out and stretching myself further and further with these practices of manifestations and such. For me, most of Neville's work really speaks about you know, being that higher concept of yourself, your ideal self, your most virtuous you, right? The higher, the highest version of yourself, the future you being pulled into being now. Once you realize that, once that is realized, that cup overfloweth. Right? Or some shit like that, right? So whatever the reason may be, for me, 
I really haven't been doing the manifestation stuff for myself. But something came to me. So one of my favorite videos that I've made is one of my favorite um, kind of anecdotes by Neville, and that's the dream that he's had about the baby pig, right? You know, feeding baby Jesus, um, fattening up the pig, feeding adequately the baby pig, which, you know, is known worldwide symbolically as, you know, the Savior, the Redeemer. And by not feeding the baby pig adequately, by neglecting that, he was neglecting using his human imagination, right? Neglecting just the free use to make the world a better place with that kind of power. To know that you have the ability at any given time to imagine greatness for others, upon others, making that kind of a blessing. If you know you have the power where your thoughts feelingly experienced bring about reality, why wouldn't you hook everybody up? Everybody. Create heaven on earth, right? Anyway, if there was some self-limiting thing, right? Because, well, as student of Neville Goddard Lindell says, turn to me, I'll turn to you, you know? Your highest vision wants to be manifested. You know what I mean? Your desire wants to be. Else it wouldn't be calling to you as desire. 3D reality came to me in the most surreal way. I hadn't been extraordinarily close with the neighbors in my neighborhood, but there is a guy who lives halfway down the street. Reminds me kind of of Santa Claus's cousin, right? And he came to me early morning driving by, showed me a photo of his daughter's cat. His daughter's visiting him, let the cat out in the backyard. Cat's been cool staying close like a frady cat cute little fluff ball round smushed in face you know really looks like a cotton puff ball right gone missing can't find them this is the second morning it's like uh oh so we we talked for a few then later that day while preparing brunch for company there's a knock on the door and it's this asian lady who's the daughter of Santa Claus's cousin. She shows me another picture of the cat, asked if I had seen him. I said no. Gave her a little bit of comfort, gave her a little bit of assuredness. She began to weep. I decided I would imagine well for her and that everything would be okay. So, told her that it would be okay, gave her a little bit of comfort, moved about my day. Now, both of these visits seem a little bit surreal, just a little bit. I had company, so I played host, I entertained. Again, for me, sitting down and practicing my human imagination is not really a thing, right? I like listening to certain quality of recording by Neville Goddard or regarding Neville Goddard's teachings while I'm falling asleep. But, uh, and I listen to the lectures all the time. But again, to, to actually practice, I wanted to devote a little bit of, of, of concentration. I don't want to be practicing incorrectly. Like, it's really just a case of putting to practice that which I've learned. I don't want to do this while entertaining, watching Obi-Wan Kenobi, enjoying a lovely brunch. But when the afternoon started winding down and company had left, I did give a few moments of my first true, real, official certified Neville Goddard approved 
manifestation, imaginal act. And I consolidated down to a singular moment, refined down in a little embodiment of emotion. And that one clink, or that one, in this case, hug, a squeeze of her snuggling that cat. Now that I kind of knew a little bit of what she looked like, and I kind of knew what the cat looked like. So I envisioned them snuggling again, and I envisioned her giving a squeeze, and I saw a smile and a joy radiate from her in my imaginal act that I had not seen in real life until... Right? So get a load of this. So not an hour or so passes from from that moment. My little buddy, Richard Parker, he comes over to me and he gives me a little tail twitch. But this one was like exceptional. This one actually had a little whirl like, get the f*** up and follow me, right? And it's like, all right. So that was notably interesting. Um, so I got up and followed him to the window. And sure enough, he was showing me. I looked down in the driveway and there's this little gray puffball kitty cat looking up at me with his little pushed in face just sitting there like a good boy just sitting there in the driveway looking up I'm fucking psych so I get up of course I go down there the cat's gone right so now it's like use the false Luke so I go out with the bag of treats I don't know trying to find the cat and like literally shut off my targeting computer like literally use the false and there was a moment of, of testing of, of faith where I like forgot about it. I made the act, I caught it, it was all there. I just had to imagine, you know, um, consolidate to like a point, right? And that point was the squeeze and the glow of joy. Long story short, the cat was there. The cat was there. I found the cat on the side of the house outside behind shrubs nice and secure looking up at me with those big eyes strange i had a dream maybe a night before the only thing i noted were somewhat large eyes of the characters i texted the woman i sent her a photo of the cat hiding behind the bush she came joyed her dad had come joyed part of my imaginal act included a bonding between father and daughter as well, because I can imagine the strife that may have created. She's visiting from New York, brings her cat with her. Dad lets the cat out, cat runs away. Strange neighborhood. Literally a couple days prior, my neighbors tell me about this big coyote just prancing down the middle of the street like he owns the joint. I've seen it before. And she turned around, I turned around, and she walks over to me holding the cat like this little stuffed animal, and she just gave it a squeeze, and she lit up in a way that I had seen once before, forgot about, because I didn't see it like that. I had seen it in my human imagination, but like literally, I had seen it only in my mind had literally forgotten about it so the experience of seeing it for the first time but it wasn't and then like by seeing it remembering that what I was seeing I had seen before only because I acted to do so I created the scene and then I literally watched the scene play out in front of me in real time. and it was on behalf of this other woman I fed the baby pig do you, do you know what I'm saying one of my best videos right there you gotta click that shit feed baby Jesus man but the point is it worked like so worked I don't even know like what 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 words I should even say because she winds up texting me Again, later, and it's ping-ponging, and, you know, and I'm, I'm being, you know, it's, it was at a pretty good place anyway. Um, but it really seemed like when it rains, it 
freaking pores. Like, it, it literally seemed, like, fantastical. Like, even, like, she was a you know, beautiful Asian. Dude, her text to me, I don't even know what, not even a thing, but it's like, you know, along with, and it led to, and like, I was the, I saw the opportunity, um, one that I did not pursue. Um, but it was an opportunity I wasn't even striving for. I mean, so in terms of like, you know, manifestation, my first and like thing to like knock that out of the park, like beyond what I was even going for, like undoubtedly. But uh, it's not about that either, because the daughter of the cousin of Santa Claus didn't come to me. Well, maybe she did, but. My work here is finished, my friend. So it's interesting. Neville speaks of condensing and restricting. Right? Like a riverbed. Right? Condensing and restricting down to a single act. And reenact that singular condensed act. That clink. Or the... Mm, but that, that little consolidation and crystallization of emotion in a moment. And then keep reenacting that return to the task, return to the one act, the one, the, the staircase, the railing, the, the one thing, right? The one thing that you've crystallized to embody that moment and keep reenacting that. It was very, very surreal, I'll say that. It's like, are these NPCs, are these people f***ing real? Like seriously. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream, right? Hmm. Very dreamlike. So I'm not sure what the takeaway is other than like, I've been working on self-concept. I've been working on the realization of the God thing. And my realization is such, I realized this. It would appear that there's people out there testing all the time and they're not getting the heart of it. Meanwhile, clearly there are people who get the heart of it and for whatever messed up reason, haven't been manifesting, haven't been consciously creating their world with that power and might, appropriating it and claiming it into being in any way, shape, or form, even testing it. Well, I tested it. Test it on others, then. You can't go wrong there. Follow the golden rule. Do unto others as you would like done unto you, right? So you can't go wrong because you're really doing blessings for others. You're fattening the pig. You're trying to get heaven made on earth. And it's not even try. Do or do not. There is no try, right? So it's literally creating heaven on earth on the behalf of others, using your imagination on the behalf of others, using your imagination lovingly to make the world a better place. At least for somebody else. What do you get to lose if it doesn't work? You didn't lose anything, right? So try that, because that's what I did. And it worked. It did more than work. I, w I was like on like, doing like a level one or level two sort of thing, and like my results were like level 27. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was very interesting. So I think the good takeaway might be, if you've got I'm God but I suck syndrome, then consider acting on the behalf of others. Right? It'll only help you in the end because I am that I am. Right? You are... Everyone in your world pushed out. 
including me, because we are that I am. Do you know what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Subscribe, Neville Nuggets, what do you think? Comment below. Guys, look, I'm out here talking on my freaking phone, right? But I'm doing it, why? Just get it going, man. I'm, I am that I am, and I'm being honest with you. So, be honest with us. Chat. Say something.